The following is a production of the Computer Information Systems Department at the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Hello. This video is intended to give you a quick introduction to program level walkthroughs. In this video, we will say that we are working on a computer program such that there is only one line to input and receive data, essentially a command line interface. Let's also say that we want to create a program that will let a user input five numbers and after the fifth number is input, a program will spit out the program will spit out the sum of those five numbers. So our problem statement is listed here and we see that we have five inputs that will be entered separately. So our problem statement is listed here. So our program statement is listed here and we see that we have five inputs that will be entered separately and one output that the program will spit out. In our last video we were introduced to human level walkthroughs which illustrated only the relevant inputs and outputs of our program. The next type of walkthrough we want to learn about is a program level walkthrough. Program level walkthroughs take into account inputs, outputs, and also variables that the computer program would need to keep track of to perform the required calculations. We call these variables working memory. Using the same example that we considered in the previous video, Let's pretend that we have five numbers that we want to input into our program. We notice that we have three types of variables. We notice that we have three types of variables. Inputs, outputs, and a new type of variable that we're calling working storage. Working storage are variables that the computer program we are writing can use to keep track of values as it performs logic. You'll also notice that in an annotated program level walkthrough, I've included a column called Notes. In the Notes column, I use shorthand to indicate what's going on in that step. Your notes can be as long or as short as you like. It's up to you. So let's perform a program level walkthrough step by step. The first thing we want to do is initialize the working memory variables that we will be using and we make a simple note that says initialize variables. I could make it even simpler and say init vars whatever works for you at this point. We want to initialize these variables before we start to provide input so that the first time we add numbers to the count and some variables these variables show zero instead of null. Keep in mind that in some environments, like Excel, if you add a number to a null, the environment will convert the null to a zero. However, many environments, such as Java and SQL, will not perform addition on null values. They will throw an error. After we have initialized the relevant variables, the next thing we want to do in this example is to input the cardinality. Cardinality is a count of members in a group. So, put simply, by entering the cardinality, we are telling the computer program how many values we are going to input. We do this so that the program knows when to stop asking for input and to output the final sum. So, we input 5 because we plan to input 5 numbers. This is assigned to the input variable card, and I make a simple note, input card. The next thing we want to do is input our first number. I assign the number 12.3 to the variable num and I make a note input num. The strategy for this problem is to keep track of how many numbers I have input. I'll use the working memory variable count to keep track of this. Each time I input a number I will add one to the count variable. In my note-taking style, the arrow means is evaluated as. So this note reads count is equal to count plus one, which is evaluated as zero plus one. The next thing I need to do is to keep track of the sum of the numbers that have been input. So each time I input a number, 
I want to add that number to my sum variable. After I have input five numbers, I want to report the summary of added up inputs to the user. So I will keep track of the running summary in the working memory variable called sum. The note here would read sum equals sum plus num, which evaluates as 0 plus 12.3. The next thing we want to do is evaluate whether we want to keep inputting numbers or not. Effectively, if we have input less than five numbers, then let's input another number. But if we've input five or more numbers, then stop inputting numbers and output the sum. Our logic is stated in our note. Here, I've used Excel notation for an if statement, which reads, if sum is greater than or equal to five, then stop and report. Otherwise, input the next number. In this case, our count is one, which is less than five. So our condition is false, and we continue with getting the next number from the user. Now we input the next number, which is negative 6.1. Once the user inputs the number, the value of the variable num has changed from 12.3 to negative 6.1. My note for this step reads, input num. The next thing we want to do is to increase the count by one. Our note for this step reads, count equals count plus one, which evaluates as one plus one or two. The value of the count variable now changes from one to two. Next, we want to add the value of the sum variable, which is 12.3, to the value we just input, which was negative 6.1. My note for this step reads, sum is equal to sum plus negative 6.1 which evaluates as 12.3 plus negative 6.1 or positive 6.2. The value of the variable sum changes from 12.3 to 6.2. Next we examine whether we want to continue adding numbers or not. So we ask if count greater than or equal to 5 stop and report otherwise input the next number in this case our count is two which is still less than five so our condition is false and we continue getting the next number from the user you can see that this pattern continues until the user has input five numbers the last number input is negative one the count has reached 5, and the sum is now 12.7. The second to last line of our example evaluates as, if count is greater than or equal to 5, stop and report. Otherwise, input the next number. Well, our conditional statement is true this time. Count is equal to 5, so we want to stop and report. The last step of this walkthrough is to output the variable sum to the user. Our note reads, report output, which is the value of the variable sum. This is the end of our annotated walkthrough exercise. Now you'll note that for the annotated walkthrough, each step gets its own row in the table and I've included an extra column for notes. As we get started, I'd like you to do your program level walkthroughs in this annotated style. However, once you get the hang of these program level walkthroughs, you should be able to simplify your table so that some of the rows contain more than one step. Remember, the tables are read top to bottom, left to right. So this basic walkthrough and this annotated walkthrough are effectively the same. The annotated walkthrough just breaks things down to a more basic level 
and it also has notes. As far as notes go, I don't have any technical rules about what you say. This is left up to you. You want to be concise, otherwise your walkthrough will be page after page of notes. However, if you're too cryptic, you won't be able to decipher your own notes. With some practice, you will get good at creating short, meaningful notes. That's it for now. If you're lost, I suggest you rewatch the video and then contact a friend from class or myself for help. Thanks for watching. Well,